Lai mani mums kaut kā kādā dieta gaila pasaģīt. Lai mani? Sveiki, malonu įsmatyti prisijungusius prie SEP verslaugimo programos, skirtos smulkiam ir vidutiniam Lietuvos verslui. Kas tik šiandien prisijungite prie šios verslaugimo programos renginių ciklo, primenu, kad visų viešų seminarų įrašus galite rasti Facebook paskiroje SEP Lietuvoje. Mes jau keturius mėnesius verslaugimo programos metu kartu su lektoriais ieškome efektyviausių ir naujausių būdų auginti verslą. Tikiu, kad tiek verslaugimo programos dalyviai Tiek ir šių verslo viešų seminarų klausytojai jau radote atsakymus iš juos penkis svarbius inovacijos kūrimo ar verslo auginimo kelionėje keilančios klausimus. Pirmasis, koks mano tikslinis klientas, kuriam bus vertinga šį inovaciją. Vėliau mes kalbėjome apie, kurį verslo modelį reikėtų jūsų atveju pasirinkti, kad užtikrintumėt ilgalaikį atvarią veiklą. Taip pat sprendėme klausimus, kokius tikslus jūs kėlėtės ir kurie veiksmų plano žingsniai būtini, kad užžiaugtumėte sparčiau. Taip pat kalbėjome, kaip reikėtų pasirinkti pardavimų strategiją, kuri padėtų padidinti pardavimus. Ir žinoma, jūs apspėjote atsakyti į klausimą, koks finansavimo šaltinis tinkamiausias šiame verslo kūrimo etape. O šiandien jau yra šeštasis ir paskutinis verslaugimo programos viešasis seminaras. Ir jo metu stengsimės atsakyti į dar vieną klausimą, siekiant efektyvaus saugimo. Kaipgi pritraukti klientų dėmesį, panaudojant šio laikinės rinkodaros priemonės. Tad šitos sesijos metu jūs sužinosite, kaip galima efektyviai apjungti pardavimų rinkodaros strategijas, kodėl turnio rinkodaras svarbu integruoti į bendrą jūsų komunikacijos strategiją. Ir sužinosite, kokios yra naujausios šio laikinės priemonės ir praktikos, kurių pagalba galėsite pasiekti klientus, greitai ir efektyviai. Šios seminaros ekspertas Raitis Purins ir jisai rinkodaros specialistas sukaupęs dešimties metų patirtį šioje srityje. Pastaruosius penkerius metus jis dirbo rinkodaros skyriaus vadovų įmonėje Printful, kuri tapo pirmoji Latvijos vienaragį. Ekspertas yra sukaupęs žinių ir praktikos elektroninėje prekyboje, paieškos optimizavime, turinio rinkodaroje ir prekės ženklo valdyme. Tad pona raitį ir pakvietėme į SEP verslaugimo programą pasidelinti su jumis, savo žinėmis, kaip tinkamai reikėtų suderinti pardavimų ir rinkodaro strategijas, kai jūs siekite įgyvenyti savo verslaugimo tikslus. So, dear raitis, welcome to SEP Growth Program. The stage is yours. Uh, hi, uh, thanks, Jurate, for the intro. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for the floor. And uh, you will be with me for more than an hour for the next 60 minutes. And then, and so once again, my name is Raitis. I'm on Printful. And today we'll talk about content marketing and how that can help achieve your business goals. So, and before we get to the topic, so I have to a little bit talk about myself. So actually, I'm one of the first bloggers in Latvia. So in 2005, basically blog and I was a go-to tool for, for anyone to do something in content marketing. I started my own blog in 2005. So it's been six, 17, 16, uh, probably 17 years already back. So, and that's one of the basically steps I did content marketing, but I didn't realize that at all. And I'm, I'm in the marketing since 2011. So more than 10 years, uh, that's actually one of my first selfies, maybe not from 2011, but 2012. 
I started my 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 first job in the mining was a uh, internet media planner, so a media agency. So that was a while ago, and uh, and I joined Printful five years ago. So uh, now company will celebrate its ninth, uh, yeah, ninth birthday uh, this year. And uh, I joined the team when the mining team was just five year uh, five people. And now actually we are 120 people more than that already speaking eight languages and then and, and, uh, working with international markets so it's been a uh, worldwide and and I, I i am looking for what to expect next and uh, now a little bit about printful what what so what we do so you can see a really complicated description here about what we do we allow anyone to start an e-commerce store so without any inventory nothing and actually international scale so we're on demand printing company but i will i will talk with examples so uh we have more than 300 products to pick from so what you can add to your e-commerce store and i have two examples for you this is a latvian store i play handball myself so that's that's my hobby and it's amateur team team sports so basically don't have a lot of fans we most of the people we are in and in, in hall is usually just the players but my team had a merch store so and uh, it's been alive like it's been live for more than three years i had just two sales so and uh, print on demand the whole concept of printful offers actually is offering me to actually keep the store alive because I, what did what did I do? I just added a design, the logo on the product, on a mug, on a shirt, on leggings, backpacks, you name it, whatever. And it's just there. And if someone will buy the product, uh, Printful automatically receive the item and will fulfill under Handball Club itself next step. So, and uh, Printful will just receive an item when we will, when actually it will be bought. So nothing happens before. And I listed my price there, and from every item sold, I will be earning because it's it's up to me to figure out the pricing, and so I don't have to invest anything before I actually learn by every sale. I had just two sales in the last few years, but just fine, and without print on demand and Printful, it would not be actually possible at all. And you can actually launch uh, brands. Well, this is one of our biggest stores, and he had created brand using print on demand. He offers hats, uh, t-shirts with his designs, and they, I think he sells a couple of hundred items per day. Uh, through within Printful, we have made even more than ten millionaires who have sold a lot of merchandise through Printful and uh, actually launching their own brands. There's a lot, a lot of brands trying to do that. Anyone can do that. Uh, even from Latvia, launch business in the USA. So. We allow doors basically to start your own company with, with a small investment. And the only thing you actually need is your computer and your ideas. <clears throat> and uh, uh, most of the business we are doing is uh, our customers are in the US. So 80% of our customers are in the US. Everything what my team does here from Latvia. Uh, we also have team in Poland and Spain and USA, but most of the team is located in Latvia. We are doing for the other markets, international markets. Uh, so that's the whole idea. And already the Jurata mentioned that in, 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 in the intro. So uh, last year we earned uh, our, our basically our the best PR news possible, the best content marketing possible. That we are the first Latvian unicorn valued at more than one billion dollars. So you have couple uh, you have companies here in Lithuania like that. We're the first one in Latvia. So the last Baltic country who got the title. Okay, but that's enough about Printful. Let's talk about content marketing. And so what is that? So content marketing actually everything that you can imagine. And I'll share a lot of lot of examples so you understand what I'm talking about. So basically, there's a lot of types of digital content. I already mentioned blog, but it's basically everything we can imagine, which is published online, not online as well. So it could be Facebook posts, it could be even this live stream. So I'll go through the examples that will be easier to me explain what is that. So I mentioned the blog. So uh, how to write an awesome blog post. So basically, it was the first probably article I searched when looking how to write blog, and it actually shows you. So when people are looking for things like that on Google, that's the result. Uh, it could be also Twitter posts. So this Twitter post, you can see 
went viral. It's already a couple of years old from 2017, but NASA did a great job when Twitter finally announced that uh, people can publish more characters on their platform. So thanks Twitter, we can always use more space. It's not a big deal, but as they were one, one of the first who probably did that, they posted the nice, nice tweet and they got a lot of engagement, a lot of red feeds, a lot of likes there as well. Uh, it could be a YouTube channel. This is a uh, Wat19. I'm 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 subscribed to this channel, and it's actually an e-commerce store who sells silly stuff online. Uh, how they get their customers? They publish silly videos online. So when they got a lot of engagement, so they probably can. They also generate a lot of traffic through website by just publishing silly different videos on their platform. People want to see and then they don't feel that it's an ad they are basically entertained by using their channel they'll need a silly gift they'll go to bat, bat 19. and probably you have seen also this cha this channel will it blend uh and where i know person blended tech uh that's the the blender company they blend different stuff online and they get a lot of views and probably if you will ever if you are their audience, will ever think about which blender I, I should buy, which is really sturdy and uh, will work pretty well. This brand will probably will be top of them, top of their mind, and still continue doing that. So they're blending different kind of stuff. Maybe if they start with iPhone, iPad, but they can probably blend everything. They even com comparison video between iPhone five and Galaxy X three. So you do videos. It could be also be the packaging you receive, how you can pass your brand message. So this is a shirt. I'm actually wearing this as well today. It's from the lab fresh. So they're sharing the message on the packaging that buy less, wash less, wear more. So their sustainability message there as well. So they actually uh, putting their brand message also, not just on email, but also on the packaging. So the whole experience is there as well. And events like this as well. So here's a screenshot of older event from from also from uh, Seb Bank uh, a while ago. So this is also content marketing. You're engaging. You're feeling something better about the, the company who's doing that. You're also seeing me and, and learning some new stuff about Printful. So there's also content marketing. So all the live events. Instagram posts. So this is a post from a while ago. Made uh, we we paid an influencer to post a, post a picture of our designs and actually uh, ad advertised to use Printful to create your custom gifts. So everything is content. Uh, a podcast, this is one of my favorite podcasts. So I'm learning about marketing from this podcast. So also if there's a company who's doing a podcast, we also feel that they're experts. So it goes all, all the way. So everything what you put online is still the marketing, content marketing. Even a slide share something super super old like and it's a slideshow about netflix culture i think there's been like there's not maybe hundreds but tens of different podcasts which mention this slideshow about netflix culture it's a pretty basic one but it was one of one of the ways how to learn about netflix culture and because of this slide share which is live and still available and they have a lot of views people want to work for netflix at least they used to i don't know what's the current situation but there's a lot of lot of engagement, a lot, a lot of people. And it helps for employer branding. And it's just a silly slide share published in an old platform. Not a YouTube video, it's been there forever. It could be also your community group or Facebook group, or it could be a forum. So we have a group, Printful Insiders, almost 20K members, which help each other as well. And it's also another platform we can also share updates about our company. So engagement with our existing base, increasing loyalty. So there's a place where they can talk each other, also complain a little bit about us and other 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 things, uh, which which is open for for everyone. Google, uh, maybe I'm not talking about here about basically what you can uh, like when you're looking for forum cinemas online. Okay, you will find a website, but there's a, a native tools of Google, like on the right side. It's basically a description about 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 the cinema. Uh, you can quickly see what's the rating. You can quickly find, is it open or not? You can check the images. So you can also use these native tools on a Google uh, that people can easily quicker find it. So we're a, a little bit faster just of Google because everyone used that. So we have to also be present there and use their tools on their platform. 
every email you receive on your platform. So it could be from Happy Socks, it could be from Bolt, uh, it could be also a reminder that I have something in my cart and they're offering a coupon code, so I, I would check out. So everything is content marketing because they uh, they try to engage with me and pursue me to do something for them. Or it's maybe in, in both case that they're asking me to download the COVID app. That's also basically making, reminding that it's it's safe to use their, their uh, taxi services. So emails. Uh, and when you talk about emails, it's a reminder how important it could be the subject line. So this is smart, smart. It's not a screen from my email, email box. I found it on Twitter. But it's another way how to, in smart way, use the subject line. So during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, people get a lot of, lot of, lot of emails. So, and they just said that it's better than their deal. So of course they probably increase the open rate because for you to actually get something from the customer, they has to open the email. Without opening the email, there will never be click. There will never be a purchase. So that's the goal of the emails. And uh, this story, this is Latvian. Uh, this is a real example. So I think it's a year old image. Uh, when uh, we ordered something from a, a, a store called Tiny One. So, and uh, they immediately thinking how they can make a repeated purchase because I was, I already was convinced I made one purchase. So they added a card, which saying that for the, my next purchase, they, I will get 10% off if I will use another coupon code. So the, uh, they're trying to remind me to make another purchase, maybe for myself or as a gift for someone else. So they're giving me a reason to return and check it out. If you add some kind of expiry dates also helps, but this is probably pretty pretty general general code they just add in every card, but that's uh, basic. And by following the, the, the coupon code, you can also see if that's working or not. And you have to always jump on the trends. So this is from, from the last one, uh, from the last year. It's always about Coca-Cola, but you know why it's was about Pfizer. But I have another better example from the integration of the president in the US. So and there's a lot of companies try to jump on the trends. So there was a look of the senator who went viral and Burton company tried to quickly uh, create a, a Instagram post and Ikea launched also, I think it was also, uh, it was a Facebook post, you can probably see that. Uh, it was a Facebook post, it's not a full screenshot, but by being quick on, 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 on the trends, you can get a lot of engagement, you can get a lot of use. So basically you spread the word because people think it's funny. They're happy to share that. That probably went viral on different WhatsApp groups, not just on the Facebook, because usually on Facebook, you get just a couple of likes and engagements. You have to be smart about content you put on. So you can't just believe that a uh, like general image will just get a, get a get a lot of use. You have to basically think about it, you have to uh, be different from the all the content people put online. So and jumping on a trend is one of the ways how to be smart about that. And uh, I wanted to also share this example. We often see these pop-ups on different pages that, that ask me, hey, 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 leave, leave, leave an email address, so I will send you a bunch of deals. It's always better to actually get people that from out of blue, they want to leave the email because if they're leaving email for, for a deal, they will just leave, leave an email. Usually it's just leave an email and you will get 10% discount on uh, which will be sent to your email, something like that. But here's another smarter way. It's another, uh, sustainability brand so who tries to uh that's important part of their brand so basically you sign up for the newsletter they will find the tree so they also uh, goes all the way when they're talking about their brand brand what they believe about and even a small thing like uh and here's probably a two parts so there's one thing that's slack uh it's it's a popular app which is used by a lot of startup companies to actually uh, not to replace email but to communicate quicker so they think that what's new they didn't like write that they updated some bugs or something like that but they just added something fun something interesting so and people notice that they put on social media and it went viral you can see how many likes and an engagement is there for one this post praising how good is uh, slack's marketing team so and 
people are sharing people like that. So when they what they're we're getting, they're getting free advertisement by just people putting that online and for the Slack. So for those people who don't know Slack, they're probably learning about Slack at this point. What is that? So what they're doing? So probably they got they got a lot of lot of searches on that day. I love this example. So this is my name. Uh, Starbucks apparently uh, has learned how to write my name on on a on a mug, but. Uh, they were famous that they, they didn't know. I don't know. Most of the cases, they were misspelling my name or any other people, people, the person's, per person's name on, on their cup. And I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but it all, and then and, and the people's like, like even the simple names, uh, they were not able to spell on the mug. And what people did, they posted online. So they posted on social media. And what happened? Starbucks earned free advertisements, so free posts. And when they started to basically finally get my name right, people again started to post on that social media. Those circles goes around around. And now they actually are printing them digitally. So maybe it was a marketing week. I don't know. Maybe someone started by accident. But basically, by doing something in a physical world, you can get people to publish something online. And I will also share another example later, later here. And uh, very often you see that you, it's maybe a little bit more challenging now with all the updates that has happened, but uh, previously it was really common. I checked a lot of mattresses, people started following me with, with, with mattress ads all over the internet. It's called retargeting. So when you visit something, then the ads are following that. Also, we do that also on print. And for a while we, we didn't say anything about our maybe business uh, in the main message. We just said that we are retargeting you. Why? Because we know our audience. We know that they know what is retargeting. And that's one of the ways how we got attention. And people, uh, we saw great, great, great numbers. So we uh, we, we kept doing that and uh, for, for a while when it was still fresh and then and, and people looked like smart. So we also received a lot of comments that are just smart way. You know, just, what, what was the goal to get people attention? Also, a book is uh, content marketing as well. So it's it could be a dig digital book as they're also asking to basically download it. It's intercom on marketing. So they are uh, customers, customer support slash email tool, which a lot of companies use to engage with their customers to provide customer support and just send emails. So when what they're doing, they actually are creating content uh, about how to be better at marketing. Because what they offer, they offer marketing tools. So it's pretty basic book about marketing. So and uh, we all even suggest our employees, those who are just beginners in marketing, to read that as well. And when they, when you download the book, uh, you leave a content, content, uh, your information, and then guess what? Sales team is uh, trying to pursue using also their tools. So that's a smart way cycle. You provide content, you get the information, and they try to sell their product and believe that their product is better because uh, they feel that they're also experts because they have written this book as well. So that's how it goes all the time. And even it's for more about employer branding. So it's Klaviyo, it's a MailChimp competitor. It's also email tool. So for every new company, every new employee, they give a lot of merch. Maybe it's not sustainable, but, but by giving so much Klaviyo stuff, uh, shirts, uh, hats, stickers, bags, you gave you're giving them reasons to publish that online. So basically, what they do, they uh, they push their employees because they want to share that. They give them reasons to share that uh, on social media. So they basically increase awareness. What is Clavio? Maybe people asking some questions. So more and more people learn about their company. Even our move when we printful, we moved to the new office. Now now everyone is posting views from the office. So basically. Previously, it didn't happen as much because we didn't get those sunsets, but also the way how to push more people, our employees to basically spread a word about employer. So, and potentially we could get more employees by doing that. And it's another story. So this is my Christmas gift. So I got a, uh, I'm a huge fan of the uh, TV shows Friends. So uh, as a gift, I got a Friends Lego set. So it's basically adult version, 18 plus. So now, of course, I put it on, on social media. They gave me something physical uh, as a Lego set. Uh, this is the original one, even got the second one. 
And uh, I think I also posted that also on stories on social media. So by doing doing something physical, probably I didn't brag that I watched the friends on on, on TV at, at the evening after after put the kids into the sleep. But I'm definitely uh, putting something that I have a Lego set. So it's something new, something fresh. And by doing something physical, basically the, the company is earning free, free, uh, free use on my Instagram, on my personal Instagram. So that's the, that's the whole idea. And then the last example to actually really maybe get your attention. And how did I learn a free trip to Thailand? Two years ago, just bef before the COVID hit, I was uh, speaking at, at, at the conference and I did that through the content marketing. So th this is me speaking in Bangkok. So 2022, 20 January. So how did I learn, earn that? Um, I have my LinkedIn account, so everyone can add me, add me, add me to your LinkedIn account if you want. I accept everyone, so that's one of my strategies, and I brag there about my company. So I publish there things I'm proud of my company. So that we got, uh, we are one of the fastest growing companies in the USA. So that we got a new office. You can see the view numbers there are also from my account. And I'm actually just bragging about companies to different people I actually don't know. Maybe they want to pitch their service to me or they're following me because I'm, 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 I'm head of my Printful. There's a lot of, lot of reasons. And one of the journalists saw these posts and he, she was probably thinking that, okay, I'm doing a great job. I'm vis visible. I talk about Printful, about Print and Demand. And she did a podcast with me. It didn't get a lot of, lot of views there. But uh, again, that podcast was noticed by the Facebook company, which is uh, another textile company. And they, they loved what I told in the, in the podcast. So what they did, they invited me to speak in Thailand. So that's how I earned my trip to the Thailand, to the content marketing, by just bragging about my company on my LinkedIn post, accepting everyone. So... Uh, I always put in the comments that you can, you can also get a job at Printful. So that's my goal when I'm doing that on LinkedIn, that we are a great empl employee. This is a wine list, by the way, and it was a paid trip back in a, in a business class. So this is a wine trip you get in a business class by the Turkish Islands. So I, I hope I, I, I got your attention as well. And another reason, like content marketing. So this is uh, Printful's website. This, this is not 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 the uh, not the screenshot from a recent time, but it's basically how much traffic we get on Google. And uh, probably I hope you understand what happened happened there. So that was the basically first COVID hit when everyone went on the lockdown, so no one left their house for a while. And uh, we have invested a lot of time as a company in, 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 in making sure that people can find us on Google. So it's a SEO, search engine optimization. So organic marketing, SEO marketing, and call as, as you wish um, for that. And we, we have invested a lot of resources in, in the last year. So, and we ex explored like a huge interest in our service because people spend time at their home. So either they had a chance to watch Netflix or try to launch an e-commerce store. And the second reason people started buying online because it was not able to buy anywhere else. So, and that's basically the result of the content marketing. We have written a lot of, lot of blog posts, a lot of things. And that's by putting online and people just are looking for something and they're one of the first results. In fact, even a graph, uh, infographic like this is content marketing content marketing and then actually my team for a couple of months did anti-marketing because at one point in the usa you had to wait two months to actually get a t-shirt so in a smart way we tried to show that maybe choose different products uh, we did and we just let know what's happening with our business so our also existing base which has been our customers for a while knows what's happening so when we send out the emails we create infographics so you can easily see what we have done to actually get back back uh, back with our normal fulfillment time. So, so trying to grow a team, everything in place, so a lot, lot of things, and also keeping our employees safe. So, and I will now talk a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff, we'll continue to talk about content marketing. So I believe it's so great. So it's actually greater return on smaller investment. So it's not that you can always go with, uh, you know, spend 100K on ads and you will see some kind of investment back. Uh, but here it's a long-term game, which you always has to remember. So if you put 
and you publish a blog post, something like that, it will not get you a lot of sales on the next day. You'll have to wait when it, uh, you know, index on Google, you have to promote it some way, uh, but then it will start returning slowly, get back to normal. So the example I just showed with the Google organic, uh, uh, it's the screenshot from Google Analytics with the traffic coming from Google. So it's something we slowly grow day day after day, month, month after month. Haven't done that, probably would never see that growth which we see on, we saw on the screenshot. But the one thing you have to remember is also about employee. It's not free. It's a talent which requires, basically you need a talent you can write and create, and that's your cost. So, but you have to treat it like investment. Like you will see a return at some point and the slow will go back to you again and again and again. It's also the way how we can promote something without selling yourself. You don't have to brag about maybe your prices, uh, but you have to think about the content, what you put there. So you have to be either educational. So it's maybe it could be an ebook that people think that you're a smart company. Like for example, uh, you can, you should like, if you are a print, print on demand company, you can always just talk about that you have to launch your merch store, stuff like that. But we also publish uh, content that how, how you can start your own brand. Uh, what's the difference between DTG and screen print? So basically we become an expert on some, some topics. You can also launch a podcast or you can go and talk on the, on, on, on the live stream like this. People think that you're good. Have to be inspiring. So this could be a case study uh, that, okay, other people did that. Here's their success story that other people want to basically engage with that. It just has to be just fun, entertaining, like uh, those YouTube videos I shared about like blending iPads or iPhones, stuff like that. So you have to think about what will be interesting. You can't just publish anything which is already there, which is boring. It's, a, it's another content like that. So you have to be a little bit different what you put there. And this again, uh, it's about organic search visibility. So again, the screenshot I showed. So uh, you have, to, you can become an, uh, that's what I talked about. So basically you get a free traffic. It's probably the best place to be uh, that you answer to people questions on Google because they're already looking uh, for something. They really have an intention basically to use your service. If you're one of the top places, you will be in consideration for the service. Of course, there's a lot of things you have to basically get it right, like price and everything else. But you're there, you'll be in a conversation to basically use your service, use your product, whatever. So, and that's just great. It's a content, it's a blog, it's a landing page. So of course, there's a lot of things you have to get right, but that's basically perk. And again, the same screenshot I already mentioned a couple of times today. And uh, people, I'm, I'm also going back, so you can become an expert in your field. Uh, there's another basically content marketing, a tweet. Marketing is telling the world you're a rock star. Content marketing showing the world you are one. Because with marketing, you like it could be, I you know, TV ads, something like that, uh, which you just get attention. And basically, it's awareness that your brand exists, that you are there. It could be also basic ad, YouTube ads. And content marketing, marketing is showing that you are basically a rock star, that you're an expert, you are that smart person people should trust you, you, you are the one. Uh, I, I just picked an agency to work with uh, for Printful because I heard them in so many different podcasts and my thinking was, okay, there's experts, they're doing something great. They share a lot of knowledge, what they're doing, what their process look. So basically they just convinced me to use them by basically uh, doing content marketing, uh, being featured in a lot of podcasts because it's one of the ways how you can consume content. Previously, maybe it was a blog. Now the new blog is the podcast. And uh, this is something I'm basically pushing not to do myself, because like if you're a founder and if it's, it's one of the ways how to earn also extra eyes on your company, you should have a presence on Twitter or LinkedIn. I have a presence on LinkedIn, but I'm not showing that I'm expert in marketing. I'm just bragging about my company. I don't have a podcast. I don't have a newsletter as a point. But uh, if you have a basically a floor, um, it could be uh, your LinkedIn, your podcast newsletter, people will just subscribe to you and believe that you're doing something great. And it's immediately an audience you can also sell 
after a while if needed. So if you're even not starting a business, you're just creating, creating out. So something to consider, something to think about. And how to basically learn uh, what to write about for your topic. So what are people looking for? Because like you, if you have a company uh, about something you can probably think about topics you want to talk about but usually it comes about just basically basic topics there's a couple of tools you can use to actually look see what people are asking people are uh, what kind of content is there a lot of tools. so this one's answer the public is basically she will show you you can add just one keyword like smoothies like i did and he will and and the tool will return back a lot of questions people are asking there like will smoothies help me lose weight and you can immediately create content about that. I don't know what's the answer there. You can look at another tool, ubersuggest.com, which you can see what kind of content is already out there. So maybe you can just create a better one. And you can also see what kind of viz is there. A lot of like these tools are for free to actually check what is there. This is about data protection, which is what I put there. Another one is also, also asked. So this is the basic one, content marketing. So there's a question was content marketing. What's our examples of content? And this tool will actually will immediately give you a lot of ideas what to write about. What are people actually currently searching online? So there's a lot of ways how to understand, okay, what should I write about if I, my business is content marketing or something else? So this will this is could be a valuable tool if you're just getting started. And it could be also a major lead magnet for your growing business. So uh, I already shared an example about intercom and, and, and book. So what they do, if you download a book, if you purchase it, they definitely will do a follow-up call, follow-up email with you. Maybe you want to also test their service. And also we are doing that as well. So this is an example from Printful. We published a, a PDF, uh, how to grow your fashion brand, to actually get attention from customers. And you can all, only download it if you create a content Printful. And that's the way how we get attention. Maybe they were not convinced with, with one of our ads, but this is the lead magnet. And we can either after that follow up with them if needed or they just can use our platform. So that's the way how to basically close the deal in a lot of different ways. And uh, there's a saying by HubSpot, not a saying, it's, it's a fact. So business who consistently provide fresh content to their blog see as many as 126% more leads than those companies without a blog. So that's a fact. If you don't have a blog, you should have one. Uh, of course, it's a lot of uh, time to invest. You should hire a freelancer because it's content and it gets a lot of perks. You could become an expert. It could be a lead magnet. You can or boost your organic visibility as well because it will start indexing on Google. In not maybe immediately, but uh, at, at the best case scenario, especially if you're doing something in a fresh field. Maybe not a lot of people are posting about that. As there's less, much less competition in other languages than English, of course. There's another thing, which is maybe a new saying, but there's no numbers currently. I replace the blog with podcasts. So there's not always need a lot of use for your podcast, uh, but if you get, target the right niche and people see value for podcasts, and uh, then it also could become your lead magnet that people will just uh, want to or consider using your service because something valuable can launch your podcast you can be guests on different podcasts so i love listening to podcasts uh why because it's something i can do on on the road as well when i'm driving a car and walking around the city from my my office to apartment so it's another way out to take take the use you can always listen to music or radio also you can learn something new about that because i, I i'm listening to podcasts to learn about something about marketing so that's my goal and something to always remember that it's a long-term investment. There's no shortcuts. If you will publish something today, it's not that on the next day it will bring you a million dollars for that. So there's no shortcuts. You have to invest a lot of time, have to be good at it as well. So uh, again, the old screenshot I show. So basically it's slowly growing and if you did right, you can also see the bump. And there's a lot of reasons on bumps. Another reason on bump, so Delta marketing team. So you know what is Delta? So Delta is airline in the USA, but uh, there was a, another thing called Delta, which people started searching online. So probably it was not a reason. So it's also be careful with when you pick your company, like uh, even you can pick your name Gelato, 
as a company name, but it's something totally different. And Delta, like they saw a lot of traffic, but uh, it's probably the traffic was not so useful as uh, people are searching for something something else. Uh, but that's how you can increase so your <laughs> awareness about something. So, and how to be successful at content marketing. So you have to have to be uh, smart about that. So you have to understand your audience. So you can't just publish a general content. So you have to understand what they're looking for, what, what, they, what they want uh, from you. So you have to understand who's, your, who's my current customer, who's my potential customer, who would find my content useful. So you have to always keep in mind that audience you're writing a content. So you can't write for everything. So you have to understand, okay, what, what's that? So you have to basically talk with them. So my number one suggestion, if you get your first customer, talk with them. So uh, they just bought from you. So you can easily probably see an email and ask them, hey, how did you learn about my company? So what was the reason why you decided to use my company? So and, and he will basically, his, he or she will, in uh, their own words, will explain why, why they're using the company, what's so best about companies, what maybe you have to improve. You can also use later those words on, in a blog or just uh, take the feedback and improve the content you're currently publishing. So and here's a great hack actually, uh, that basically you have to run your ideas by your customers. Uh, very often we live in a small bubble in our company, we're thinking about one thing, but you always has to basically check the reality. What's the current situation? If you have customers, you have potential customers, or maybe it's, it's a competitor customer. So check your ideas and you can befriend them. So get to know three to four customers and basically run ideas by them, what they think about your product, your ideas, your campaigns, whatever. So, and you see that I'm talking about content marketing to content marketing's LinkedIn, Twitter here. Uh, so, and it's this presentation. So that's one of the ways how I learn about marketing or what, what I do at my job. And another thing I love, so there's a lot of, lot of talk about personas that I know what, what, what the person is doing, what the person uh, is wearing, like which car they love, love or I don't know, what's their salary and stuff like that. But uh, I better prefer a little bit different framework. So job to be done. So uh, for example, I will give an example about Printful. So for, for to use Printful, there's could be a lot of reasons. So it could be that I want to start my first online business. So that's the job I want to get done. So I want to launch my business. And there's certain content you want to basically see, you want to receive. So we as a company can actually pursue you to actually use Printful. So that's one of the jobs person wants to do. Or maybe the person who could also be a way how to use Printful, they want to order something personalized for their business. This could be a t-shirt. And again, it's totally different, basically content they want to receive. They don't want to learn about integrations. They don't want to learn about different processes. The only thing they care about is that they want to upload their design and when they will receive the product, it will be I arrive here on time. Or maybe your existing business like Coca-Cola, for example, who's our customer and uh, that they want to actually offer personalized designs to their customers as well. So it's again, a little bit different. It's not about uh, starting your own business. It's about basically monetizing your business. And maybe they need a special treatment because probably it's a big company. They want to talk with account manager. Has to, that's a really fresh way. And we really love that way, how to think about our audience, like what kind of content they will need. When you're talking about if he's running Volkswagen and stuff like that, that's in our case, I believe that it's also a valid way you can look online and how to use that, that but this is the easy, easier way uh, to actually get started Think about, okay, what kind of job the person wants to get done, why they're using that. Maybe it also could be that, okay, they're launching a business, they want to have a passive income, or maybe they want to leave their full-time job. That's another direction what you can think about, because what's, what's the job to get that? I want to say goodbye to my old job, so I'm starting my own business. So, and uh, that's, so you have to understand these audience, these personas, if you want to, want to go like that. And uh, when you create content, there's a different stages uh, for customers when basically what they're thinking about, what, what's, what they basically level of knowledge about your company. And those three are awareness that they have to basically just understand that you exist. It could be even a category, it's even be your company. 
okay they learned about your company so they probably at the start they want to also believe that you're a legit company and you're not something no one uses and basically just made up company on online so you have to convince them that okay you exist then the evaluation so that they check okay they check reviews maybe of the product so they check okay if the price is okay is the quality there uh, will I when I will receive items so they are considering your product so there are a lot of things going on no they they have to purchase so for example in in one of the countries where we are, we are working currently you're losing half of the sales because people that can't input their local credit card so you also have to uh, make sure that they can actually check out at the end, so they can actually make a purchase. They can call you, whatever it's needed at this point. That's a basically basic customer journey. But in reality, it's a little bit maybe different, it's like roller coaster all around. So basically, he see Insta ads, so he looks the reviews, he waits for the payday, so maybe something happening with him. If it's an Instagram ad, you're maybe driving a car when you're checking your Instagram as well, okay, you see that. It's, it's not happened like very always chronologically. So it could be, forgets about you in three months. Uh, I don't know, then he takes two glasses and basically just makes a purchase. And it's basically now the new reality for a content marketer to actually follow and actually try to engage with the customer. To actually, he learns about your company and goes through the funnel and actually purchase that. There should be up, up and downs and not always you can follow that. And then you have to create a content. Of course, uh, if you're not creating content, uh, then uh, there will be nothing. So it could be a landing page. We are using landing page for the ads. Uh, so there's a beauty that you can pick an audience and you can create landing page just for them. And we have a lot of these landing page made it for different audience so that we add all the arguments they need to actually convince them that Printful is a good idea. Uh, it could be also relative audience. This is a screenshot from the, from the end of the uh, 2020. Uh, Wix, uh, they want to be experts in their field. So they're talking about e-commerce. So what happened with the market in 2020? What will happen in 2021? So uh, talk about that a lot. And in our case, it could be also basically create audience. So we are in Brazil, so it's a new market and we are just getting started there so there's not so many people know about print and demand and that you can also ease so easily launch your e-commerce store so we are not creating the same content we are creating in the usa or uk or any other market so we basically created a 15 minute introduction call about printful but here's basically basic manual what is that what you have to do that's basically we are pushing a video all over the place in brazil the people, okay, this is something you have to watch to actually understand what is that. Because we saw that there's a lot of people interested, but they have no idea what to do. So creating a, a audience a content, which works just for that audience, so we can convert them and then buying customers. Now they have to promote the content. So you can have the best piece of content and make the best point ever. If no one looks at it, artic article is the waste, is a waste. So you have to basically get someone to read it. You can put it on social media, your own social media. If you have nothing with your companies, you can, of course, buy ad space. Uh, you can try to reach some communities which could be maybe interested. You can try to reach if someone links to your article. Uh, so, but you have to get someone to read it. Otherwise, what's the point of writing if no one sees that? And you can use different ways, also influencers. So another like great example, I had never like before imagined that you can even government can use influencers to actually promote best practices and uh, that people have to wear masks, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's a one-year-old example. So it's also another channel you can use actually promote your product as well, uh, or basically general rules, what you have to do. Um, and there's another way which actually pushes you to brag about your company or your success. So here's a couple of examples. One is from the Bolt, uh, which uh, shows how I, uh, how much I offset it on your Bolt, right? So basically, I also created and offset those CO2 emissions. There's another from Strava shows how what what was my average speed and probably the one. Everyone else is the Spotify interview. 
they create a lot of these basically story type images, which you can later share on social media. Basically, they're pushing people to publish something about their company. And usually, and, and during that time, Spotify gets a lot, a lot of examples. Here's the basically data from the last year. Like basically, Spotify is trending on Twitter on the day. So almost like more than 2 million tweets. And even by the Peter, when he was writing, the number kept kept growing all the time. So what's the power of Spotify and rap uh, in the marketing? So people are just, basically they feel free to share what they listened in social media. People are looking forward to learning what was uh, their music st statistic from the last year. Because I, I, I don't think that you can actually access that at the time. So they create this buzz in early December. Even Rimi did something like that. So maybe I was scared how many wine bottles I bought uh, with Rimi, but they also added some, some interesting facts. So I didn't use any plastic bags. So, uh, and I, which was my favorite Rimi store. So I bought most of the stuff online, of course. So, and I also saw that uh, locally in Latvia, people also will sharing that they, what they did with Rimi, that they add more vegetables than everyone else. So that was interesting uh, to see how others are also trying to jump on this trend. Uh, but one of the most probably important things for the content marketing that you always have to remember to measure and analyze what you're actually doing, because when you create a content, you still want to basically achieve your business goals. You're not just putting content online by just right to sit there, no have to make sure that you have to understand how you actually know that the content was successful and uh, should I repeat that or not? Maybe uh, uh, Shopify, when they first launched it, maybe so they had some idea and then they measured and analyzed. So how did it help to increase loyalty and uh, did it help to get more sales? Probably it worked. So they're, they're doing that again and again. So and I will give you a couple, couple of examples. So if you're publishing something in a blog, uh, my goal is increase awareness and actually get another user. If I'm doing a webinar, which is pushed to our existing base, those who recently created, uh, my goal is that actually they become active. So they make a purchase. If I send them after that email, so we launch a new product, my goal is that, hey, please make a sale. That example where I send a 10% when uh, Peel company sent 10% discount for my purchase, which I left in the cart, the goal for sure is purchase. You have to basically see that. Or if I'm publishing white paper online, or it could be a book, I want to actually get a lead. So that's basically the first goal. If not getting leads, probably I shouldn't write another white paper because some book says that. So you have to always measure and see if that's working or not. So for every content, you have to have some kind of goal. How you're going to measure, that was successful. Don't do something uh, without putting your basically success points or KPIs in place. And always remember our personalization. So it's online, it's much easier to personalize. Uh, and there's a lot, of, I will show you some of the examples how we can personalize the content for people online. So, and it's much easier than you think or maybe you have thought in the, in the, in, in the past. So Madara, it's a Latvian brand. Uh, but they also have Lithuanian language. And while, when I'm visiting a website from Lithuania, it will automatically show me the language of Lithuania. And we, there's a reason why also Printful is available in eight languages, because we see we saw that when we localized the website, we, uh, that improved the conversion rate. Because people expect that, uh, and they, like they, uh, they convert just better because they want to very often consume the content in, in their local language. Germans want to see content in Germans, German, French, the same. And a lot of people that even do not know English language as well. And it's automatically knows from which country you're visiting. So if I'm from Latvia, it will show Latvian language. If uh, I'm from Lithuania, it will show Lithuanian language. And you can, if uh, this is a lead scoring, this is an example from the Shopify. So during the registration, they ask a couple of questions. And made on that, they can adjust the dashboard, which you will see immediately after the finished registration. They can score you and maybe send you the account manager that there's someone should immediately call you or send a follow-up email. Or they can just adjust their onboarding flow or maybe anything else you can imagine by asking the question, okay. You can also just use as a survey to ask you, where did you learn about your company? And you also will get information, maybe which channel works or not. 
an example from booking. So they already know that I'm going to Barcelona. So when they, uh, it's, it's an example from, from a couple of the years. So they can also always send me a general email that where's the place I can check for the attraction for my upcoming, upcoming uh, trip because I have booked something in Barcelona or they can just send me personalized email putting my name in the email. Everyone knows that it's not a person who wrote my email, it's automatic, but that will uh, naturally increase uh, chances that person will open the email. Oscillating as an email and my name and a country in the subject line because it's personalized. Okay, this is made for me and that's how people brain work. Uh, uh, another thing is regarding the ads. So there's uh, two links you can check nice ads and Facebook ads library. So, and now uh, one is retargeting ads. So which could be based on what you just checked on the, on the about you page, uh, what kind of products, and then they can target you showing those products, which you just check. So maybe it will convince you to go back and finish uh, the purchase. Another one is also just to adjust the content, which is shown on the ad uh, when you look for something. Like it's type form, it's basically a, a place where you can create forms. So and don't use the same content on every basically query. There could be also someone looking for how to create forms and this also should be adjusted content. And this is a smart face. So someone is looking for competitor type form and uh, they can't use the type form in their uh, ad because it's legal, it's trademark. So just said form stack is better, smarter forms. And they give a uh, basically social proof. We have 150 form templates. What's maybe people a person is looking for. So when that's probably will basically just get attention and he will earn click on their ads. And we're often like I share a lot of examples and I have never studied marketing in, in the university or anywhere else. So I'm learning from others. So Facebook home ads library is the place to check what kind of ads are different companies putting in different locations. So everything is visible and can inspired by that and just do a better job. Another things you can uh, localize or personalize. It's language already talked about. It's also currency. So if you visit Printful from uh, Lithuania or Latvia, you will see Euro currency. If you'll go to the UK, you will see pounds. You will go to the US, you will see dollars. So, and we try to add these little things everywhere that you feel that, okay, what kind of level of service I will get and uh, if I will visit a country from Lithuania or from Latvia or, or in any, uh, any other country in the world. And the other day, as we are sending items, so logistics company is about shipping. So you can uh, have to show how quickly you'll get items. So probably if I'm purchasing something in Latvia, I will get it a couple of days. If I'm based in, I know, somewhere in South Africa, it will take much longer. Have to just show that and then and, and offer these different, different options, showcase that. And uh, of course, uh, we're localizing that as well in our Instagram posts. This is Print for Japan, made for a Japan audience. I have I don't I have no clue what is said that okay I have some clue because there's numbers, a lot of products and and, and stuff like that. But they're localizing uh, content to different markets. We can't use the same language. We can't use the same visuals, same facts for for the same markets. So we have to personalize it. So and I want, another thing I wanted to talk about is about user generated content. So uh, very often companies feel that they have to offer really polished content, like everything's top notch, but uh, people want to learn from other people's like you. So there's a fact by Adweek. So 76% of angels surveyed said that they trusted content shared by average people more than brands. So you can just get someone to talk about your company. That's basically the best marketing you can get that others are talking and suggesting you, or you can, try to showcase that average people content uh, uh, from your brand. Starbucks, so uh, they, uh, I think they every, every, like from time to time they run a contest that they expect uh, ask people to share their pictures with Starbucks mugs on the content and then they use that on your, on your social media and uh, from their feature from their site. 
And uh, it's a really smart content, smart way, because for example, I'm also in Latvia, so I can't get any content at all. But if I create a campaign that people are sharing content, I will able to get maybe a I know, model shoot from, I know, from waterfall, somewhere like that, which you can't find anywhere in Baltics. So it's a way how to get diverse content from your users. And uh, this is another company for another example. So uh, they included a message in their basically packing slip, which you receive together when you receive an item. Uh, anyone also with Printful can do that as well. So they ask you, hey, share the image, share the product you just received online, send us a link and we'll give, give you a $5 refund for your purchase or a coupon, whatever. What's happening, they're doing that. So they're basically featuring my brand that I bought something from inktail.com and basically I'm, what, what I'm getting, I'm getting free, free uh, content, uh, free extra, um, someone actually is published. So actually getting free, free ads, ad space in their personal account. There's also engagement, 266 likes. So you're giving them reason to actually talk about you in their personal social media channel. You have to just ask. And here they're also giving the perk. So why should you not do that? You can always just ask. The worst thing what could happen, they will not publish that. The best thing you can get posts like this. And uh, people love reviews. So uh, Amazon probably is uh, one of the greatest companies who has done the greatest thing with reviews on their website. So you can get a lot of real feedback and learn about the product. So this screenshot from Amazon, they about this product, they have more than 1600 reviews and most of them are five stars or uh, four stars. I can see images from different people is, and make, make sure that they're basically things person is saying on the, on the, on the, uh, on, on the product description and image, that's their correct and right. And uh, I can ask questions and see that. So basically user generated content which basically commits people. So you have to ask reviews. You, uh, people will see what others uh, say about product. It will show that someone actually purchased the items because if you have a lot of reviews, probably someone purchased the items. And it will be just a social proof which will convince at the end of the day people to actually purchase from you. Uh, and we actively do that. So we see that someone is happy with our service, send them email. Hey, review on, on Facebook. So the worst thing could happen, they will not review. Be careful when you ask that, because uh, you can ask that maybe person is unhappy and you can just get a lot of one star views. So you have to basically think about the trigger, because we are not sending as a campaign. It's a trigger on our website, which just sends an email and asks you to leave a review. Like what we do, give us a high five. And sometimes you can also use those reviews, even bad reviews, uh, as your marketing materials. So the left one is pretty funny. Bet should like bets, not an ice cream. So it's a it's a, it's 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 a bet, not an 150 ice cream sandwich I wanted. So that's also a valuable review that okay, this is a bet. Or you can use that also in, in, in ads. So uh, it was too difficult for me. So just showing that they are experts that actually giving a really great content and asking, like actually showing the social proof that learn from the top 1% of marketers. Main visual is basically a bad review, which you're using as a good review. In general, social proof. So uh, they're just using it in ads, basically quotes from their customers, maybe from reviews, maybe of someone else, showing that other companies also use that and what they say about their company. So. And they also includes, includes the image that it's not a stock image. They're basically convincing that it's, it's not a fake, fake one. So, and you, see, you have seen probably these a lot around. And uh, it's, I didn't find a, a new, new screenshot, but this is one from 2020. So paid social lessons learned. So this is uh, Savannah is uh, someone I follow on Twitter. So she's, uh, she, she, she runs a, one, one person agency uh, to run their Facebook ads or TikTok ads, or whatever. So the user generated content was the best performing ad creative type across all platforms. So it's not always about creating a fancy photo shoot. It's sometimes you can take a photo with your phone or even record a selfie video 
which will uh, basically convince uh, customers and get their attention and basically makes them believe that this is something they should consider or see. You can then later use these user guide content on your uh, product uh, page as well. You can add your fancy page and just show that other has bought the item and how it looks that, that they how it looks like in their environment. So another way out to use that. We use a lot of case studies. So just creating that our business has helped achieve the goals. It's spatial content. So when we put that uh, on our website or, or you can also uh, use that as an ad as you wish. Uh, and we are actively working with uh, other YouTubers and asking them to create content about Printful as well. So it's another social proof from another affiliate. It's unboxing video is the easiest way you can do. Just send a product and uh, ask the, the YouTuber to actually unpack, and unpack on camera. So you will get a video about with, with your product. Someone probably is praising the product or giving their feedback, what is good, what's not bad. It, make it makes it real. So, and you also get to work with this audience as well. So we, get, we got here more than 1,000 views as well. So that's great. Uh, and uh, reviews on, on Google Maps. So I mentioned about Facebook. Remember that if you're a cafe, something people will definitely check before booking your table uh, or, or uh, going to grocery store, stuff like that. Is there lines or not lines? So that's important. So you can also use this content in copy. So the worst thing you can just check what kind of words people are using to describe your business and then maybe use that in your content because people like when you use their language, not some kind of really complicated words. And probably you have seen this like in my in my phone. So uh, I think in the Mondo, now Strava. So uh, uh, but one time after every every uh, run, when they saw that maybe the app didn't lag, so they asked me to leave the review. So they feel that something is positive. So when uh, by just asking, because also very often in different platforms, the five star reviews improves the algorithms, and you just are visible by much more people on their platform. And another thing, so when you're creating content, uh, it's about social proof. I mentioned it about a couple of times. So you have to make sure that people can trust you, that you're the legit company, you're not fake. So one of the best thing is basically show photos of your people in office. So I love to check uh, about us page, seeing if what was the story for the company and you can learn a lot from them. So just, just show yourself on, 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 on uh, that you're real, that you're there, there. Very often the best story about your company is something you're, uh, you as a founder, you as a company just believe and why you have started a business. And that will convince some of the people that uh, to basically do business with you as well. Uh, language and correct spelling. So remember about that. So generally, just make sure that you use the right language. There's an example how as what's British English and American English. So either even a dollar sign, which side will show that, okay, you're not a fake company, you're an American company, and Americans allowed to buy from other Americans. And just if you write correctly, it will just shows, uh, it will show a better version about your company. Uh, show that it's easy to contact you so that you're not hiding your phone number or your email address. Very often, if you are enterprise customers, put it on the top of the page or even below. I hate those forms that you have to fill in. Someone at some point will get back to you. So you want to see that, okay, I can contact you if uh, there will be some kind of problem. So it also will make sure that they will believe you that you're legit. Work with the best. One of the key success for Printful was that we started working with Shop fairly beginning. So we were available on, on the Shop Fair platform. It was really a big deal back then. So they just naturally also generate more traffic. And it's also great social proof that you're working with a bigger, bigger company. If I, I can say that Printful works with Coca-Cola, it's already a signal that, oh, this big company, this public company is working with a company like Printful. Probably Printful is legit as well. So showcase with work with, just ask permission, they're fine with that as well. 
And there's a really great link. Uh, it's an article by Conversion Excel. Uh, but actually, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a blog about uh, digital marketing, about how to con convert people on online. And uh, you can go and check the link. Uh, what other fresh factors you can put on your website, making sure that your company to, to which will exist for a while. Even a thing like publishing a jobs page uh, is also a trust signal. Just show that okay, you're hiring, you're here to stay. You will not, you will not disappear in one one month. That is not one person company who can just decide. Okay, I'm not doing that. That's it. If you're hiring, you're serious. So check the link. Trust me, I'm doctor. No one will trust that. And uh, one of the probably most important things about the marketing, you have to continue to be curious uh, about the marketing. It's all, always changing environment. I like like I can't even comment about TikTok so much because I'm not I'm not really engaged to that. But that's something that didn't exist a couple of years ago. So you have to constantly explore what you have to do as a business. Like we now in a company have a position called TikTok manager. And uh, uh, that person's job will be to actually just showcase their face online. So you have to constantly stay up to, up to, up to date what's happening online. So there's a couple of books I can suggest, which I have read and I'm constantly suggesting to other marketers like me or managers. Like the first one is about hiring. What kind of questions to ask during job interviews to find a great talent? And the common marketing. So it was already my content marketing example, but it's really ABC for marketing. So it's a really short book, but in a couple of like in a couple of hours, you can basically learn about basics about marketing. If you're having struggling with I know IT project manager, anyone, and you're working in marketing, it's something maybe the person should read and he will understand or she will understand your world marketing world better. Uh, dead by meetings, uh, very often the company has too many meetings or not efficient meetings. It's something uh, how you can improve that. So that's a great book. Rework, a uh, book by Basecamp uh, creators. Basecamp is project management tool, uh, productivity tool in general. So they talk about how they started their own company. So basically they go through the... Uh, through their story, what they learned during the process. If you're launching a company, definitely suggesting to read. Hug Your Haters talks about internet world that now anyone who has a computer can just go online and complain. If I will hate something, I'll just go complain on Twitter. Previously, it was happened just in a private conversation like phone call, phone call or email. Now we'll go, just go on Twitter on, or leave a bad review. And there's a lot of people who are just reading those. Uh, so you also have to interact with everything which is published there because that's the way how we can make things better. So if there's someone complaining, say sorry. If someone's praising your company, say thank you. It's a book about that. And the last one, a word, word of mouth marketing, uh, like probably the best marketing. So and it it's, it's talks about how to get that people talk about your own company. So what you're doing that basically your customers becomes your greatest marketing tool that, that you're doing that the basically other people are suggesting you to add others as well. Um, so uh, and if you're doing a great job, people have, will not hesitate to do that and you have to just motivate that. So there already was a couple of examples like asking them to share on social media, providing them with the coupons, launch referral program, stuff like that or maybe shop fan rap, shop Spotify and rap, what you can do. And some podcasts as well. So I, I will be suggesting four ones. So how I built this is a great one. So he's interviewing different company founders who has built different companies and how they went through the journey. Another one by Reed Hoffman, Masters of Scale. So a podcast uh, which talks about how to scale the company. Um, like very often goes through the struggles I'm also dealing with. So when you have to quickly scale the company, what's, what, what, what can you face? And then two one marketing podcast, like DGMG Radio. Uh, it's a podcast about B2B marketing. So there's a guy who worked in a couple of companies, David Gerhard. So and he interviews different marketing managers as well about 
their experience, uh, what they have done. So it's a great, great content to listen. The last one by Pep Laya. So uh, I also already mentioned a blog, Conversion Excel. It also interviews different marketers so on how to win. So how they become successful marketing. So a great way you have to basically learn or generate new ideas for your company. And another one I want to also suggest as I'm working with national company. So, and this is a newsletter I'm suggesting. So you have to just Google morning, morning brew. They also have marketing brew, retail brew, or the couple of different newsletters about different topics. I receive morning brew newsletter every day in my inbox. So, and they, in a short way, they send me business news from the US. And that's the way how I stay up to date what's happening in the US, in the USA. Also have a marketing group, so they send in one email everything what's happening in the marketing world. It's not coming in every every day, so it's a couple of times a week, but that's, that's basically a really short way. I don't have to go to CNN or any other Fox News portal to read about. I receive that in my inbox every day. And Twitter is my favorite social media channel. So I have a great Twitter following. I have a lot of like tweets. So you can get right, right this put inch and you'll find my Twitter account. So I'm not super active by publishing content there, but I follow a lot of, lot of people uh, from, from uh, USA and other countries and they are pretty active. There. So I already shared a couple of examples in this presentation. So there's a couple of people you can follow there uh, just be curious, stay curious, and uh, basically then take those ideas and adjust using your business uh, to be smarter to achieve your business goals. So, and uh, that's it, what I wanted to say today. So you can find me online, right? It's poor inch. You can add me to your LinkedIn account and hope this was interesting. It was valuable. So thank you for listening and have a great day today. So thanks everyone. Bye-bye.